Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from ShouldIGetIt.com. Welcome to episode 10 of Shooting Cards, the show that comes out every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, where I teach you new tips and tricks on how to take better photos of cars. So in this episode, we're gonna finally move into the interior of a car. For the last nine weeks, we've been doing rolling shots, regular shots, how to do headlights, polarizer filters, all that type of stuff. Today, we're gonna start using the polarizer and this foam board to get really cool interior shots. So just as a quick heads up in terms of gear I'm using here, I'm using a piece of foam cord that I bought for three bucks. And then to make this easier, you can either use a human assistant, just someone who will push the shutter button down for you, self timer, or what I'm using is an aperture trig master. I think this is about 20 or 30 bucks. I'll have the link to it below. Basically this lets me just hit a button on here and it will uh, trigger the camera to take a photo. So I don't have to keep moving and doing self timer. It just makes it a lot easier and you'll understand why in a second. But anyways, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to add and subtract and subtract light from certain areas of the interior so we get a really clean looking shot like this. And you can see that it looks like we have a lot of light filled in. So the base shot that we started with is right here. You can see it looks okay, but there's a lot of uh, points in the image that are really bright and also way too dark. So like for the top right here, the dash is really bright. You can probably see that right now it's blown out. Um, and then, you know, the buttons here, we have various reflections and light. The seats, you know, when we move it, we have a little bit of a highlight. So we want to kind of make everything even and everything have a uh, very neutral, but yet contrasty look to it. And we're going to do that with this piece of foam core that I bought at uh, Beverly's, uh, which is a fabric store. You can get these at Michael's, Office Depot, the Dollar Tree. It doesn't really matter. It'll range from one to five dollars, depending on where you get it from. And this is a 20 by 30 inch piece of foam board. So. I'm gonna start by showing you uh, what I did. So basically, when you have this piece of foam board, you can see that when it reflects light, it adds just a nice little highlight. And hopefully you guys can see it on that side. Uh, it adds a little highlight by reflecting from the sun. So basically you want the sun to come in through the windshield, bounce off of the foam core and add some light. So you can see that here, if I step out, we can add light right here on this side. So you can see the glove box right here is really dark. Then we're just gonna bring that in, snap a photo, and then we have that frame there. Let's say for the shift knob, we want it to uh, be a little bit more even instead of having a weird highlight on it, and for the seat as well. We can move this piece of foam core right here, snap a photo, and now we have a clean frame for that, as well as for the steering wheel, the navigation, and the uh, dials right here for the thermometer. So there's a lot of different things that you can shade and bounce light onto and end up with different files. Now, a really important thing to keep in mind here is shoot a little bit more than you need because you can always delete files, but you can't go back and get the exact same setup to add photos. So shoot maybe 30 frames for the interior, then we're gonna go into Lightroom, pick the best nine or 10, put them together. So you can see, basically, you're just gonna go around the car, add light by using this uh, foam core, also subtract light from where you need it, and then go outside of the car and hold this over the windshield so that you get a darker uh, image for the top, for the right, the middle, and the left side. And then we're gonna hop into Lightroom, select which images we wanna open in Photoshop, and I'll show you how to put them together. So let's hop into that right now. All right, guys, so now we are in Lightroom. We've imported the images and done the lens corrections that we talked about last week. We have 21 files here and we're gonna get this down to about nine or 10 and then we're gonna go into Photoshop. This might seem a little overwhelming if you've never worked with a lot of layers, but don't worry, we're gonna start by just mixing two together, then we'll add the third. And as long as you do this as a small step-by-step -step progression, it's actually not too bad. Um, so right now what we're gonna do is go into Lightroom. I'm gonna show you all the images I took. I'm gonna show you which ones I'm gonna pick and flag for editing. So the ones that I want I'm gonna set them as yellow so then I can just group them all and open Photoshop and we're gonna get going. If you have any questions along this whole process, feel free to leave a comment or DM me on Instagram at a car photographer uh, and I'll be sure to help you out as much as I can. So let's go through the first image. Now the first image is just a base shot, no light, nothing at all. You can see the door was closed on this one. So this one uh, actually doesn't really need to be used but keep in mind you do want a base shot uh, that's gonna be like the rest of your photos. So I did take another base later on with that. So here's one photo we have with the uh, glove box being lit by the foam core. You can see that the next image is very similar and uh, there is a little bit of a difference between these two. The big difference you can see is on the steering wheel right here. So you can see a lot of light comes in on the bottom of the wheel and also from the single here. We also have the mini logo showing up uh, in the center, which I actually kind of like and the reflection on the door changes a little bit as well uh, in the window. So 
I like the one that lights up the steering wheel a bit more. So we're gonna press seven on that one. That's the one we already did. Uh, and we're gonna keep going. Now, here we have everything shaded uh, for the center. So I think I want that one as well. Then I'm going to move in. I have this side lit up uh, of the glove box. So you know the underneath of the left side of the dash, uh, not the glove box, the dash. So I'm gonna set that to yellow. Then everything shaded, we're gonna do that one. This is just kind of another base exposure, but you can see I left the uh, foam core in there. So I don't think we need that, but the beauty of this is that we can always come back. If we find a frame, here's the base without anything. Gonna need that one, set that to yellow. Here is a little bit more of the side lit up. You can see the center panels uh, are all lit very nicely. There's a nice even light on the center display. I think we'll take that one. This one doesn't really do much for me. Neither does this. Here is a little bit of light on the center, but I think we already got that kind of here. But, you know, we can mark it and maybe we'll use it, maybe not, we'll see. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit longer of an edit, but that's totally fine. Then here we have a little bit more of a gradient on the speedometer. It's totally up to personal preference if you want that. That's kind of the only piece I'd use here. Uh, as you can see, it is too bright on the glove box and then the reflections are a little bit too much in the dials here, so I'm not a huge fan of that. Here's another one from the left side, so I just stood outside the car. This really lights up the uh, pillar here, so maybe I'll take that one. And again, once we get into Photoshop, that's where we can kind of pick and choose what we want. So here you can see there's a super bright highlight on the top of the steering wheel from the sun. We just shaded that out, and uh, then you can see all the detail there, and everything's evenly lit, so we'll take that. And then I stepped outside of the car and shot some photos here. So you can see that I stepped outside and provided shade on the top of the dashboard like I was talking about. So we'll take that, that's on the right side, then in the middle of the dash. So I'll take that. This also does the steering wheel and it actually has a tiny bit of highlight. So I like this more than the other steering wheel one. So let me undo yellow on that. Uh, and then you can see I missed a little bit of the top and this. So I took another frame and that has everything but missed the steering wheel. So that's why this is all about combining images. So that is all of our shots there that we're gonna need. I think uh, this one here has the bottom of the seat. The only thing I realized I missed is uh, two things. One, I didn't shade the passenger seat completely. So that is something that I should have done. Unfortunately, I don't have the file, so I can't add that in. Uh, and it's really difficult because my car's two doors uh, to light the inside of the door, which is why I did the door open for this shot. But um, if you have a four door car and you can somehow reflect light, and still get the camera to see it, you know, not totally block it with the poster board, and you can light the door, that would be a nice touch. So I think that's all the images we need. I have yet another base exposure, but now we can go in Lightroom, we can hit attribute. So you can see I have quite a few yellow shots here. We can hit attribute, and then we're gonna select yellow. And now here's all the yellow images we have. So we actually have 12 files, and like I mentioned, some of these we might not use. So what I'm gonna do now is hit Command A to select them all, right click, and go to uh, edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now in this video, I wanna show you more how to put these images together rather than how to edit them and put them together. But let's say you want to bring the shadows up or change the colors, you can do that, apply it to everything like we talked about in the last few episodes and then open them all together. So we're gonna let that load and then we'll get back to it. All right guys, so now we are in Photoshop. We have all those images opened as layers as you can see here in Photoshop CC. And what I did just to save a little bit of time was I selected all the layers. So hold shift, select the top layer, and then I did align and auto align layers. This is gonna make sure that if the car or tripod moved a little bit, it's gonna line everything up. As you can see in the corners and the edges, we do have some blank pixels. So we're gonna crop that down at the very end. Now what we're gonna do is go through each image and rename it. I'm gonna show you how to do this on the first one, and then I'll fast forward through the rest of them. So I have this top image here. We can see that the glove box is lit up. So I'm gonna write glove box base, and we're gonna go to the next image, and we can see that this is gonna be the shaded center console, okay? So basically, we're just gonna do this process so we know what's in each image, like here, left side, uh, under dash, and we're gonna continue this through the rest of the images. All right, guys, so now we have all of the layers named. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of them yet, but we're gonna start by putting the base door open, so the one that has no foam board actually in the frame. We're gonna put this at the very bottom and we're gonna build on top of this. Now I wanna do the shaded dashboard first and that's gonna give you a good example of how this is gonna work. So here we have the shaded top left side of the dashboard. So pretty much what we want 
is uh, this area here, you can see kind of circled, we kind of want that from this image, right? So you can see the dashboard is blown out here. If we turn on that layer, it's fine, but you can see that the door is open and, or the door is closed when we turn on this layer and you know the steering wheel is not as well lit and we just wanna build from parts of each image. So what we're gonna do is use a layer mask to just turn on this portion here of this layer and it's gonna make a bit more sense when we do this. So what we're gonna do is apply a layer mask. So we're just gonna hit the layer mask button here in the control panel. Uh, and as you can see, the layer mask is white. That means everything is gonna show up. I only want certain parts. So I'm actually gonna invert this by hitting Command I. And then what we're gonna do is select a brush, set it to white. So press B for brush or go up here, set the color to white, and then we're gonna start painting in. So you can see that as I'm painting this with my trackpad, the uh, part from that layer starts showing up, right? So you can see on the layer mask that it showed up. If I accidentally, accidentally messed up and did it over here, the cool thing about layer masks, if I change the color to the opposite, which would be black, I can get rid of that. So we're all good there. So as you can see from this image, uh, the only part that shows up is this, what's in white. That is the top left of the dash. So here it is without it, here it is with, and you can see the shaded dash looks much better. There's much more detail brought back in there. And we can do a little bit more cleaning up. You can see I did like too much on the outside of the windshield. So I can just fix that right there. And of course, the more time you spend on this, the better it's gonna look, but I just wanna show you the fundamentals here. Now we have the middle of the dashboard, and that was pretty much covered. Uh, I like that it got the steering wheel, so I want that part. So again, layer mask, we're gonna invert it. And basically, I just want it applied on the steering wheel. So I'm gonna paint right here, paint on the gauges, and now we're good. So you can see before, the steering wheel had this very bright highlight that didn't look very nice. And here we have it still with detail in it, but it's much darker. And this is different than just going in, in Lightroom and brushing it darker. This is actually what it looks like when it's in the shade. Now I want the top right of the dash. So again, same thing. We're gonna hit the uh, layer mask button. We're gonna invert it because you can see I'm in this picture uh, in the background. I don't want that. I just want the dash that's shaded. So again, we're just gonna invert it by hitting Command I. Then we're gonna use the brush and kind of brush in that shaded part right here. And I'm just gonna do it on the pillar so it's all even from that frame. Oops, and we're good right about there. So you can see now with these three, I can group them by hitting Command G. That's the dash, and you can see how big of a difference those three layers made. And that's why this takes multiple images because your foam board is not gonna be the size of a dash, it's gonna be the size of maybe a third or a half of it, so it'll take multiple layers to put it together. Now, let's say I want the left side of the steering wheel added in. I don't want the highlight part here in the middle, right? I don't want the dash from that. I just want the bottom. So again, we're gonna turn on a layer mask. We're gonna invert it, and then we're just gonna paint white where we want that to show up. So we want a little bit of light here in the footwell, light right there on the dash. I don't want it up here. And this way we can just kind of paint a little bit of light and what's cool is, you know, it looks really harsh on the steering wheel right here. I do want a touch of it. What we can do is lower the opacity of the brush, which is up here, and you can just press like two on your keyboard and it'll go to 20. And we can actually just feather this down so it's only a little bit of light that's gonna come from it. And this is where you get a lot of control because you can just get a little bit of the effect here and there on the wheel. Uh, and that is going to make it really simple. For example, I don't want this reflection on the steering wheel right here. So I'm just gonna go to 100% paint black and just leave it natural as it is. So there is the left side of the dash lit up. So basically we're gonna go through this process for the entire car. Uh, and what you could do also, I wanna show you the uh, kind of regular method, which would be to just erase uh, what you want and then invert it. So for example, in this layer, all I want is like this center uh, of the dash right here um, of the center console. So what I'm gonna do is paint black so that it disappears from that layer. So let's say I paint black right here, right? And so all that stuff's gonna disappear and the foam core is left out. But now what I'm gonna do is invert that layer mask. Hopefully this makes sense. And when I hit Command I, then I have just the parts that I want. So there we go, we have just that part lit. Of course, I don't want this top part, so I'm gonna paint black there, fix that up, and then a little bit of the foam cores there, fix that. And so that way you can see what you're getting rid of which then you're gonna flip and that's actually what you're adding. Hopefully that makes sense uh, and doesn't confuse you too much. But 
basically you just go through you know this whole thing then we have the glove box lit up so I'm gonna do the same thing here so the glove box is what I want and I'm gonna paint black on it so it disappears okay and then the foam core is still in now I want to flip that so now I just got the glove box from that and the foam core disappeared and you can see that since we did auto align the layers line up perfectly so there we have that light there let's see the steering wheel shaded that's fine I don't really need to worry about that the seat is what I want so I'll hit layer mask brush away right so now it looks messed up but when you flip it it will actually be perfect and you flip it by hitting command I so you can see that layer all it all we use that layer for was to get rid of the highlights here on the bottom of the seat and that's all we did, but you can see it makes the image look that much cleaner, okay? So that's why you take a lot of different photos and you put them together. Then we have the left side under the dash, which we kind of already had. I don't want to make it that much brighter. If I wanted, I could add this to light the left side of the steering wheel, but I actually like the very even light that it has right now. I know it's a little dark, but that's all up to personal taste. Uh, then we have the shaded center console. So for example, if I want to get rid of the highlight here on the shift knob, I could do that by turning this layer on and let's say painting black right here flip it and there we go now we have a more even light and we can paint that and oops there's the foam core board and now we have just a little bit more light on it and that's just totally up to personal preference and then we can get rid of the reflection in the middle either using the patch tool or where's the shift knob we can just paint the reflection out. There we go. Cool. And then we have uh, shaded over the center console. So if we want to shade all this, kind of the same idea here. So we can flip it. Then we can paint white. Boom. There we go. So that is all shaded. Let me zoom out here. Whoops. So that's all in the shade. And you can see now it's much more evenly lit. And then uh, we have a little bit more if we want it in the passenger footwell, that light. I don't think I'm a huge fan of that. It does light the door a little bit. Let's say we use that. So again, I'm going to paint black in this case. So it's going to get rid of it on the door. And then we're going to flip that and just get rid of the board by painting black again because we just inverted the whole thing. And there is our image. Uh, I like the door. I don't want it painted on the shift knob. Cool. So as you guys can see now, if I put all these layers into a group, here's our base exposure. Here's our final image. And you can see that if we had, let's say another exposure for uh, the shaded passenger seat, this would look much better. And if we wanted to add some more light on the pedals, we could have put the foam core down there. But that is basically how you edit this together. Um, once you get you know, used to it and you're pretty quick at doing the layer masks and you understand why you're doing everything, this actually comes together pretty quick. It might take 10 to 15 minutes, uh, especially if you have like a Wacom tablet like this. I didn't use it because I want to show you guys in real speed what it is like with a uh, trackpad. I'm just using the Apple trackpad. Uh, the magic trackpad but if you have a pen and uh, a tablet it goes even faster and so this is kind of the fundamentals to shoot these images of course i'd recommend cleaning the glass uh, on the windshield of the car shooting at a better location if you have a four-door car close the front door and um, then you know reflect on it so you can get a little bit of light maybe push the passenger seat all the way back so you can reflect on it there's a couple different tricks you can do, but that's basically a, the fundamentals of building an image by adding light and also creating shadow so that you have a more clean light. One other thing I'd recommend, like in this image, I should have shaded the steering wheel a little bit more here. I'm sure that if I go into Lightroom, I could find an image that we didn't select that has that. I think I actually have, let's see, like this image right here. If I wanted, I could open this in Photoshop uh, and then I could paste it on, align the layers, and add it. But you guys get the idea. I don't want to drag this video out for too long. Anyways, I hope you watched it all the way through. Please share your examples with me. Either DM me on Instagram at a car photographer or tag me in the final image or email it to me. Uh, I'm really curious to see what you come up with, especially what cars you're shooting. Uh, and if you need any other help, please let me know. I'm always happy to do that. Please make sure you subscribe for next week's episode coming out on Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will see you then, and again, if you have any questions, hit me up on Instagram at a car photographer. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.